Now, <clears throat> look at what he says here. He said, without shedding of blood is no remission. You can't be saved without the shedding of blood. And if you can be saved by the shedding of blood, why would anybody want to uh, do the sacrifices? Look at verse 4. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sin. Chapter 10. It's not possible that it could take away sin. But Jesus is the Lamb that taketh away the sin of the world. He said in verse number 10, By the which will we are sanctified, by the testament, by the covenant, by the will of God, we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sin. Now there's religion out there that believes that they have to have a mass and they have to do the sacrifice over and over and they do the little bread and they do the wine in the cup which is supposed to, by transubstimation, uh, be miraculously transformed into the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. Why would you want to do that when the Bible said He died once for all and it's finished? Why? Because they don't believe Jesus finished it. They don't believe in the total redemption process of Jesus Christ. They believe that they are here as representatives to finish what Jesus couldn't finish. Same thing Joseph Smith believed. That's why we got Mormons. Same thing Taz Russell believed. That's why there's Jehovah's Witnesses. Same thing all these other ones believed. That's why they're trying to work their way to heaven. Because they all believe that Jesus didn't finish it. And if you believe that you can lose your salvation, you don't believe Jesus finished it. Amen. Yes. It's finished. Amen. It is done, Jesus said. Indeed. My brother asked me one time how to lapel pin and said, done. Boy, he got real close. He looked at that. He said, done. He said, what's done? I said, everything it takes for you to get to heaven. Well, okay, he walked off. <laughs> Too late, buddy. You done heard it. You done heard it, and you'll never forget it. That's what I like it. What done? What's done? Everything it takes to get to heaven. You ain't got to do anything. Else. <laughs> you catch it. I like little sharp things. Man, I read my, the, the tailgate on my truck the other day. And uh, he, he, I told him, I said, Reefers on my tail. Oh, I'm afraid to. I said, why? Yeah, I'm going to do some rape. I said, what you afraid of? He went down and he read it. He looked at me and said, too late, you read it. <laughs> I'm never going to forget it. <laughs> I like it. What else are you going to do? You know, you get it to him, boom, eat. The Holy Spirit can use that for the rest of your life. You're not going to forget it. I like little things like that. I'm not afraid. I'm not scared of it. The Bible says, but this man, Jesus Christ, after he had offered one sacrifice for sin, he forever sat down on the right hand of God. From henceforth, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. And what that means is that Jesus is sitting on the throne and he's waiting for God to do everything that God's doing. And at the end of it, when he comes back, I want you to remember this. There's a, there's a song out there that we used to sing years ago, and I really hadn't sang it very much because of the uh, theological issue of it. But it's not a big deal. I don't have, if it was on, I'd sing along with it. But there's a song that the inspirations used to sing all the time. I'm expecting a king to visit any day. He's coming forth with a great white crowd to carry us away. Guess what? I'm not expecting a king. When Jesus comes back, He's not coming back as my King. When He comes back to get the church, He's coming back as our Savior. Then seven years later, He's coming back, he's coming back as King. Now Israel could say, I'm expecting a King, but I'm expecting a Savior. And He's going to come get us. Why? Because the Bible said that He finished it all. He's henceforth expecting till His enemies be made His footstool. Jesus is seated at the right hand of God. The next time He's going to get up, He's going to get up and He's going to come to this earth and He's going to take His church out. And seven years later, He's going to get up again. And He's coming as King. And His enemies will be made His footstool. The battle of Armageddon told a fellow one time that believed that uh, they were going to inherit the earth. Well, I believe we're going to inherit the earth. They said, well, in order for you to inherit the earth, you don't believe in being saved going up in the rapture, do you? No, we don't believe in that. I said, well, according to the Bible, according to what I read, 
that if you're going to make it through what you're trying to do is, what you need to do is you need to stay alive long enough for Jesus to set up His kingdom. So that means you need to be alive until the rapture takes place and I'm taken out of here. And you need to make sure you live right. Then the tribulation period starts and there's seven years of tribulation. And the second half of the tribulation, the Bible said two-thirds of the earth's population is going to be killed by the heat of the sun. Then, you better hope that you're not one of the two-thirds. Then, Jesus is coming back for the battle of Armageddon where He's going to destroy all manner of flesh and only the remnant shall remain. You better hope that you're not one of the unremnants. <laughs> That the ones that Jesus is going to destroy. Then once that is done, the millennial reign happens. And in the millennial kingdom, it's going to last a thousand years. And in that thousand year reign of Christ on this earth, if you sin one time, you're immediately put to death. So from this point on, if the rapture takes place, you've got to live at least another 1,007 years. <laughs> and you better do it right. Or you're not going to make it. Or you can get saved and go to heaven with me. <laughs> they say, oh, man, it sure must take a lot of faith to God, to God to save you like that. No, it don't take a lot of faith. It takes more faith to believe the garbage that you're trying to put in my head. Mm -hmm. It takes more faith to believe in evolution than it takes to just trust God. All I got to do is believe that He died to save me. That He is. That doesn't take a lot of faith. It takes a lot of faith to believe that some gajillion years ago, something bumped into itself. I guess it was turning around too fast. It split. Got a girlfriend. Got married. Had children. Grew all up into all them other things. It amazes me. I watch the Discovery Channel and the Learning Channel. They always talk about these Five million years ago, this was going on. Yeah. How do we know? Was there a camera? Like these people that on, on YouTube, you can find a lot of these idiots on YouTube. Some people say, well, you're on YouTube too, huh? I'm a nut. I'm screwing on the right bolt. <laughs> and they, they're saying, well, you know, in the very center of Jupiter, there's all this whatever. I said, how did they know that? Did somebody go over there and dig with a shelf? <laughs> well, you know, they can figure, they can't figure anything past what they can see. Because they don't believe what they see. God is all around them and they can see it. They don't believe that. But they're going to try to tell me what's in the middle of Jupiter. That's why this teacher told this class one time. She told her class, she said, God is not real. This little girl asked, she said, can I ask a question? Why do you say God is not real? She said, because you can't see God, so that means God doesn't exist. The little girl looked at the teacher, she said, well, I can't see your brain. <laughs> do you have one? <laughs> Amen? It takes faith, amen. See, it's finished. It's done. Amen. I had a lot more on that, but maybe, maybe next week I'll finish on chapter 10. Amen. I hope that's a blessing. It's finished. Why would anybody, why would anybody in their right mind want to work their way to heaven when it's free and paid for because they're not their right mind? Why would anybody get saved and expect that God expects them to keep it in the power of their own flesh. You can't control your house. You can't control your wife. You can't control your husband. You can't control your kids. How are you going to keep your salvation? And you, can't you can't control your mind. How are you going to keep your salvation? You cannot control that which is carnal. How are you going to keep that which is spiritual? Thank God we're kept by the power of God. Amen. The Holy Spirit that lives in us causes us to live and holy and godly life in Christ Jesus. I'm glad He's my Savior. I'm glad I know that I'm going to heaven when I die. I'm going to live forever with Jesus. Not a doubt in my mind.